Okay, hello and welcome to Flack App and a Cold One. Haunted house, well not so much a house, haunted flat I should say. Um, something coming off that then. Um, part one, I'm just going to sort of split it into parts, probably two parts, perhaps three. In the first part I'll just give you an introduction of Loveling Garage, exactly you know what Loveling Garage was. Um, run by my tide, my grandfather and my father, um, situated in Loveling Garage. <laughs> um, situated in Loveling, Loveling Garage, situated in Loveling. It's a garage, hence it's called Loveling Garage in Denby. So, anyway, um, consisted the main garage. Little office. It's it's all different now. It's changed now to what it is like. But what I'm going by what it was like when I was when I grew up there. That's where I grew up as a kid in Loveling Garage, well the flat, not in the garage actually, the flat above. But yeah, uh, as you look at it, you've got the main garage. Uh, the ramp used to be right in front of you. The spray paint room used to be just on the left to the far end, um, and. Just to the left of the main garage doors was the door, front door, up to the flat. To the right, uh, on ground level, is or was the showroom, it was called. Massive area that. And it, there was a slope dropped down to the far end of the showroom. And adjoining onto that was the old smithy, where there was two forges there, one massive big one with a big chimney and all that. And there was another one, but a little small one, where they used to put the, the coals and things and, you know, the anvils and make, you know, the, the horseshoes and, you know, anything to do with metal and all that would, would be made in there. It was the old smithy. Um, and above... The showroom, it was called the old garage, which is it was in two parts, and then above that was the attic. Massive, massive area. Like I said, if if I had video cameras and things when I was a kid, or you know when I was growing up and all that, I, it'd be if you're interested in that type of thing, I could have videoed it and everything for you. So and then. Next door to that, to this showroom, is now the Brit, the Britannia Inn, which was the paint shop or the paint store, I should say. That's where they used to store all the um, the paints and stuff. They used to call it the paint store. And I think uh, next door to that, which is now a storeroom for Evan Jones, the electrical people, just down the bottom by the Collins Club. Um, I'm sure that had something to do with Loving Garage as well. It was originally run by the Williams brothers going back years. And they are coach builders, if you want to look at it. I've actually never looked it up, but there must be something online. Williams brothers, coach builders, Denby. If you want to look it up, they made, you know, horse and carts and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, like I said, the front door. As soon as you opened the front door, you had a little like porch area, and then there was the stairs, flight of stairs. The top of the stairs, right in front of you, we called it the front room. It was very rarely used, the front room. It was called the front room, even though it was at the back. Um, and then from as the top of the stairs, you got the front room in front of you. Um, you turned right, you had the corridor. It was, I don't know, 20, 20 feet long, perhaps no longer than that, about 25 feet long. And above, if you looked above the corridor, there was like gr glass panes. And if you looked up and you'd see the skylights of the attic, the attic at the very top was split into two. The attic above the, sh um, the old garage was a massive area. Um, and then it was split with a wall 
but there was a gap at the top of the wall of about five feet, something like that, and there was a ladder running up and you'd climb the ladder and you'd climb over the other side and then you'd be up above the flat part, the actual um, living part. So you'd go down the corridor, well no, before you start going down the corridor, as soon as you're standing, you've just gone atop the stairs and round and you're facing the corridor. On your right was the bedroom, big bedroom, you'd go down the corridor and to the end of the corridor there was two doors on the right, there was another bedroom, another bedroom, two bedrooms. Directly in front of you at the end of the corridor was the bathroom um, and in front of the bathroom to your left was the living room, big coal fire in it. You'd go through the living room and then to your right there was a door and that was the kitchen and enter the kitchen to your left there was another door and that would take you down to the back there was a flight of stairs um, and that, that would take you to the to the back the back garden which was dropped down in in two tiers it should drop like that and as you went into the kitchen on the left you got the door which drops down into the garden almost opposite you there was another little door and that opened out into the old garage that's the second floor up was the old garage which was again split into two there was the front part and the back part and if you crossed slightly diagonally there was another door and if you opened that you would arrive on top of a flight of stairs from the showroom it would reach there and that door was a swinging door it was on a spring if you opened it and let go of it, it would slam shut, it would dee 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 bang, it would slam shut, it was never locked. So you're on that landing there, across that landing, you're in another room, only a small room, perhaps 12 feet by 12 feet, something like that. And diagonally across, bearing right, there was another door, you opened that, and there was wooden steps leading up to the very top of the attic. And in the attic, um, as you head towards it was I think it's three windows which you, if you look down you, you can look down into Love Lane, Love Lane itself and in that part up there right in the top was all the parts when we were kids we used to make dens up there the old car parts old coach parts old the old lanterns and stuff it was absolutely full of stuff like that I tell you what if and it was all skipped it was all chucked in the skip all that it was cleared if you put that on ebay or went to an antiques dealer i bet you they would be absolutely worth a fortune old wheels and stuff like that it was old coach wheels you know the horse and car coach wheels it was full of stuff like that and then if you if you turned around the corner you'd see the ladder you climb the ladder and you'd get over that and then you'd um come into the, the first part of the attic above the flat you'd walk across the walkboard if you look down on the walkboard on your right you'd see the panes of glass above the corridor which I just mentioned if you looked up you'd see the skylights and then you head towards brickwork and there was a little opening in the brickwork at the end of the walkway you'd duck down you'd squeeze through and you'd be above the front room and the top of the main stairs only a little small room that was. Nothing in there. Absolutely nothing in there at all. So that's basically, I think I've covered everything about uh, the actual building itself. Which is, well, Lovely Guys, I think, I think it is still called Lovely Guys. I don't know who's got it now. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to, to cover. It's about it, I think. I've covered everything. And in the next flat cap and the cold one, I will talk about the things that I experienced in that place. Um, very, very strange, unexplained. So yeah, check out part two. Flat cap and a cold one. Haunted house, lovely garage, or haunted flat. <laughs>